Giáng sinh vui vẻ, anh nghe thấy tiếng rạp nhanh trên cửa văn phòng của mình, vào đi, anh nói, nhưng cửa đã mở. Đó là Martin, trong bộ vét hải quân bảnh bao và cà vạt có hoa văn, giữ cánh cửa bằng một tay rám nắng khi anh ta thản nhiên dựa vào khe hở, này, Chris. Rất vui khi thấy bạn vẫn ở đây, Martin nói, nở một nụ cười rạng rỡ. Một số mái tóc đen của anh ấy bắt đầu tuột khỏi phần còn lại. Được vuốt ngược lại một cách gọn gàng, Martin, tôi có thể giúp gì cho bạn? Chris hỏi, xoay người trên ghế văn phòng, chỉ muốn nhắc bạn rằng chúng tôi cần nhận được những báo cáo đó trước quý sau, tôi nhớ, Chris nhẹ nhàng nói. Tôi đã cố gắng hết sức để hoàn thành mọi việc. Anh ngã người ra ghế, nghe thấy tiếng lạch cạch quen thuộc và dùng một tay vuốt xuống bộ râu của mình. Những sợi râu gần sống, bạc trắng theo tuổi và một chút ố vàng xung quanh viền. Đủ dài để phủ lên cái bụng tròn của anh Thật là khó Bạn biết đấy Là người duy nhất Glenn đã rất hữu ích vào thời điểm này trong năm Chris vẫn giữ giọng điều hòa nhã Như một người ông Tuy nhiên Martin vẫn nhăn mặt khi nhắc đến tên của Glenn Tôi biết Anh bạn Tôi biết Đó không phải là quyết định của tôi Bạn biết đấy Martin lắc đầu Maddox đã và đang thực hiện cắt giảm anh ấy nói đó là vì ngân sách. Martin nhanh chóng liếc nhìn lên và xuống hành lang, gần như theo bản năng, nhưng dường như không tìm thấy gì và quay trở lại sự chú ý của mình với ông già trong văn phòng. Maddox vẫn ở trong tòa nhà chứ? Chris hỏi, vẫn lơ đảng vuốt trâu khi anh ngã người về phía sau một cách thoải mái. Không, Martin lại lắc đầu, hôm qua Maddox đã cắt ngang sớm để đi nghỉ. Ba Hamas với gia đình. Chris gật đầu. Chà! Làm sao anh ta biết được liệu tôi có hoàn thành công việc giấy tờ đúng hạn không, hơ mơ mơ. Anh tự cho phép mình cười nhẹ trước vẻ ngạc nhiên thoáng qua trên khuôn mặt Martin. Người đàn ông trẻ vuốt tóc ra sau mắt, tôi không bao giờ coi bạn là loại người đến muộn trong công việc. Là nó thực sự là xấu. Martin nhíu mày hỏi, Chris hít một hơi thật sâu và để không khí thổi ra qua kẻ răng. Chỉ có vậy là quá nhiều việc đối với một người đàn ông, anh nói. Anh xoay ghế lại đối diện với bàn của mình, cầu nhau một chút với nỗ lực, sau đó xáo trộn một vài tờ giấy. Tôi đã quá già cho việc này, Martin, không, bạn là người giỏi nhất trong bi. Martin nói nhanh. Anh ta bước một bước vào văn phòng nhỏ và vỗ mạnh vào vai Chris hai lần, sau đó quay lại dựa vào từ hành lang. Chúng tôi cần bạn ở đây, anh bạn. Công ty đang trông cậy vào bạn. Chỉ là... Maddox bảo tôi nhắc bạn và tôi phải làm công việc của mình, bạn biết đấy. Đừng bắn người đưa tin. Anh lại nở nụ cười trong trắng đó rồi bật cười, giơ hai tay lên như thể đưa ra lời đầu hàng. Chris cười một chút với anh ta, lại ngã người vào ghế văn phòng. Có két, tôi sẽ hoàn thành chúng đúng giờ, Martin, anh nói một cách trấn an và sau đó mỉm cười. Khó có thể nhìn thấy miệng anh ta dưới bộ ri mép trắng, nhưng đôi mắt xanh của anh ta nhăn lại ở khóe. Martin dường như cảm thấy tốt hơn, và anh ấy vỗ vào khung cửa trước khi vẫy tay chào Chris. Cha, đừng loanh quanh ở đây quá muộn. Anh bạn. Và hãy tận hưởng kỳ nghỉ của bạn. Được rồi, Chris nồng nhiệt trả lời, bạn cũng vậy. Khi bước chân của Martin lùi dần khỏi văn phòng của anh ấy, Chris nghe thấy anh ấy hét lên, chúc bạn có một kỳ nghỉ vui vẻ. Anh không chắc liệu nó dành cho anh hay cho người khác trong văn phòng. Bất chấp điều đó, Chris đã gầm lên trong hành lang, m e r r i Christmas, bằng giọng nói trầm và bùng nổ của mình. Khi Martin nghe thấy câu trả lời từ ông già, anh ta dừng lại. Trong lòng anh đột nhiên tràn ngập một cảm giác ấm áp dễ chịu, giống như ngụm cà phê đầu tiên vào buổi sáng. Nhưng, cảm giác đó đã biến mất ngay sau khi nó đến, và anh tự tin rằng nó không có gì và tiếp tục đi xuống hành lang, trong văn phòng của mình. Chris xem xét các trang mà anh vẫn còn để kiểm tra trước khi rời đi. Anh có thể thấy rằng đèn hành lang đã mờ đi, một nửa trong số chúng đã tắt, để báo hiệu ngày làm việc kết thúc. Anh thở dài, cái bụng to của anh nâng anh lên một chút khi anh làm như vậy. Lắc đầu, anh kéo chiếc cặp từ bên dưới bàn làm việc. Thật khó cho anh ta để cúi xuống xa như vậy với khung hình đầy đặn của mình, và anh ta thở khò khè một chút vì nỗ lực. Với một tay anh ta mở chiếc cặp ra. Tay kia anh ta cầm lấy đống giấy tờ và ném chúng vào, đóng nó lại lần nữa, kiểm tra đồng hồ, anh ta cau có. Vợ anh sẽ khó chịu với anh vì đi ăn tối muộn. 
anh ta giật lấy chiếc áo khoác đi niêm lót lông cừu trách rưới của mình và mặc vào khi bước ngang ra khỏi văn phòng. Ở tuổi già của ông, những công việc từng có vẻ dễ dàng, kéo áo khoác, khóa cửa văn phòng, cúi xuống nhặt một chiếc cặp, giờ lại thử thách ông. Vào lúc anh ấy cảm thấy đã sẵn sàng để đi ra ngoài, anh ấy đã thở hỗn hển vì gắng sức, tuyết rơi cả ngày, như để đánh dấu cuộc di cư của các nhân viên văn phòng. Mọi người sẽ đi trong một tuần, và trong khi Chris và đồng nghiệp ăn mừng, tòa nhà sẽ chìm trong bóng tối và yên tĩnh. Đôi giày lười của Chris có in hình gọn gàng. Merry Christmas, he heard a quick rap on his office door. Come in, he said, but the door was already opening. It was Martin, in a sleek navy suit and patterned tie, holding the door with one tanned hand as he casually leaned into the opening. Hey, Chris. Glad to see you're still here, Martin said, flashing a brilliant smile. Some of his dark hair was beginning to slip free from the rest, which was neatly slicked back. Martin, what can I do for you? Chris asked, swiveling in his office chair. Just wanted to remind you that we need to get those reports before next quarter. I remember, Chris said gently. I've been doing my best to get everything done. He leaned back in his chair, hearing the old familiar creak, and brushed one hand down his beard. The weighty whiskers, white with age and a bit yellowed around the edges, were long enough to drape over his round belly. It's been hard, you know, being the only one. Glenn was very helpful this time of year. Chris kept his tone amiable. Grandfather Lee. Still, Martin winced at the mention of Glenn's name. I know, man, I know. That wasn't my decision, you know. Martin shook his head. Maddox has been making cutbacks. He says it's for the budget. Martin quickly glanced up and down the hallway, almost instinctively, but apparently found nothing and returned his attention back to the old man in the office. Is Maddox still in the building? Chris asked, still absently stroking his beard as he leaned back comfortably. Nah, Martin shook his head again. Maddox cut out early yesterday to leave for vacation. Bahamas with the family. Chris nodded. Well, how will he know if I even get the paperwork done on time, hmm? He allowed himself a little chuckle at the quick look of surprise on Martin's face. The younger man brushed his hair back out of his eyes. I never took you for the type to turn in your work late. Is it really that bad? Martin asked, furrowing his brow. Chris took a deep breath and let the air whistle out through his teeth. It's just too much work for one man, that's all, he said. He swiveled his chair back around to face his desk, grunting a bit with the effort, then shuffled a few papers. I'm getting too old for this, Martin. Nah, you're the best in the biz. Martin said quickly. He took one step into the little office and patted Chris twice on the shoulder, hard, then went back to leaning in from the hallway. We need you here, man. The company is counting on you. Just, Maddox told me to remind you and I gotta do my job. You know. Don't shoot the messenger. He flashed that white smile again and then laughed, holding up his hands as if offering surrender. Chris laughed a little with him, leaning back in the office chair again. Creek, I'll get them done on time, Martin, he said reassuringly, and then smiled. His mouth could hardly be seen under his white mustache, but his blue eyes crinkled up at the corners. Martin seemed to feel better, and he clapped the door frame before giving Chris a wave. Well? Don't hang around here too late, man. And enjoy your vacation. Okay, Chris replied warmly, you, too. As Martin's footsteps retreated away from his office, Chris heard him shout, Happy Holidays. He wasn't sure if it had been meant for him or for someone else in the office. Regardless, Chris bellowed down the hall, Merry Christmas. In his deep, booming voice. When Martin heard the reply from the old man, he stopped in his tracks. He was suddenly filled with a comforting feeling of warmth like the first sip of a fresh cup of coffee in the morning. But, the sensation was gone as soon as it had arrived, and he convinced himself that it had been nothing and continued on down the hallway. In his office, Chris surveyed the pages he still had left to check before leaving. He could see that the hallway lights had been dimmed, half of them shut off, to signal the end of the workday. 
he sighed, his large belly lifting him up a little as he did so. Shaking his head, he pulled his briefcase from beneath his desk. It was hard for him to bend over that far with his plump frame, and he wheezed a little from the effort. With one hand he popped the case open, and with the other he grabbed up the papers and tossed them in, snapping it closed again, checking his watch, he scowled. His wife was going to be upset with him for being late to dinner. He snatched up his raggedy, fleece-lined denim jacket and tugged it on as he stepped sideways out of his office. In his old age, the tasks that once seemed easy pulling on a coat. Locking an office door, bending down to pick up a briefcase now challenged him. By the time he felt ready to go outside, he was huffing and puffing from the exertion. The snow had been falling all day, as if to mark the exodus of office workers. Everyone would be gone for one week, and while Chris and his co-workers celebrated, the building would sit dark and quiet. Chris's loafers made neat prints. Merry Christmas, he heard a quick rap on his office door, come in, he said, but the door was already opening. It was Martin, in a sleek navy suit and patterned tie, holding the door with one tanned hand as he casually leaned into the opening, hey, Chris. Glad to see you're still here, Martin said, flashing a brilliant smile. Some of his dark hair was beginning to slip free from the rest, which was neatly slicked back. Martin, what can I do for you? Chris asked, swiveling in his office chair. Just wanted to remind you that we need to get those reports before next quarter. I remember, Chris said gently. I've been doing my best to get everything done. He leaned back in his chair, hearing the old familiar creak, and brushed one hand down his beard. The weighty whiskers, white with age and a bit yellowed around the edges, were long enough to drape over his round belly. It's been hard, you know, being the only one. Glenn was very helpful this time of year. Chris kept his tone amiable. Grandfatherly. Still, Martin winced at the mention of Glenn's name, I know, man, I know. That wasn't my decision, you know. Martin shook his head. Maddox has been making cutbacks. He says it's for the budget. Martin quickly glanced up and down the hallway, almost instinctively, but apparently found nothing and returned his attention back to the old man in the office. Is Maddox still in the building? Chris asked, still absently stroking his beard as he leaned back comfortably. Nah, Martin shook his head again. Maddox cut out early yesterday to leave for vacation. Bahamas with the family. Chris nodded. Well, how will he know if I even get the paperwork done on time, hmm? He allowed himself a little chuckle at the quick look of surprise on Martin's face. The younger man brushed his hair back out of his eyes. I never took you for the type to turn in your work late. Is it really that bad? Martin asked, furrowing his brow. Chris took a deep breath and let the air whistle out through his teeth. It's just too much work for one man, that's all, he said. He swiveled his chair back around to face his desk, grunting a bit with the effort, then shuffled a few papers. I'm getting too old for this, Martin. Nah, you're the best in the biz. Martin said quickly. He took one step into the little office and patted Chris twice on the shoulder, hard, then went back to leaning in from the hallway. We need you here, man. The company is counting on you. Just, Maddox told me to remind you and I gotta do my job. You know. Don't shoot the messenger. He flashed that white smile again and then laughed, holding up his hands as if offering surrender. Chris laughed a little with him, leaning back in the office chair again. Creek. I'll get them done on time, Martin, he said reassuringly, and then smiled. His mouth could hardly be seen under his white mustache, but his blue eyes crinkled up at the corners. Martin seemed to feel better, and he clapped the doorframe before giving Chris a wave. Well? Don't hang around here too late, man. And enjoy your vacation. Okay, Chris replied warmly, you, too. As Martin's footsteps retreated away from his office, Chris heard him shout, Happy Holidays. He wasn't sure if it had been meant for him or for someone else in the office. Regardless, Chris bellowed down the hall, Merry Christmas. In his deep, booming voice.
When Martin heard the reply from the old man, he stopped in his tracks. He was suddenly filled with a comforting feeling of warmth. Like the first sip of a fresh cup of coffee in the morning. But, the sensation was gone as soon as it had arrived, and he convinced himself that it had been nothing and continued on down the hallway. In his office, Chris surveyed the pages he still had left to check before leaving. He could see that the hallway lights had been dimmed, half of them shut off, to signal the end of the workday. He sighed, his large belly lifting him up a little as he did so. Shaking his head, he pulled his briefcase from beneath his desk. It was hard for him to bend over that far with his plump frame, and he wheezed a little from the effort. With one hand he popped the case open, and with the other he grabbed up the papers and tossed them in, snapping it closed again, checking his watch, he scowled. His wife was going to be upset with him for being late to dinner. He snatched up his raggedy, fleece-lined denim jacket and tugged it on as he stepped sideways out of his office. In his old age, the tasks that once seemed easy pulling on a coat. Locking an office door, bending down to pick up a briefcase now challenged him. By the time he felt ready to go outside, he was huffing and puffing from the exertion. The snow had been falling all day, as if to mark the exodus of office workers. Everyone would be gone for one week, and while Chris and his co-workers celebrated, the building would sit dark and quiet. Chris's loafers made neat prints.